If you use Linux, chances are you've been distro hopping a lot, trying to find the best combination of up-to-date, stability, hardware support, and access to all the applications you need. Well, these days might soon come to an end, because with Vanilla OS, you get any distro and all their apps on a single, super stable base. So let's look at Vanilla OS, at what it does differently from other distros, and at our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Chasm Workspaces, a fantastic tool to stream operating systems, desktops, and apps straight to your browser. They just released version 1.13, which adds a workspace registry for installing and sharing open source container-based images, including the linuxserver.io collection of web desktops that are now streamed using Chasm VNC. Additional updates include enhanced mobile support with progressive web apps, and you can now stop or pause workspaces to restore them later. The Chasm Workspaces Community Edition can be self-hosted, but they also have a cloud service if you prefer. So to learn more about Chasm Workspaces, click the link in the description. So what makes Vanilla OS special in a sea of cookie-cutter Ubuntu-based distributions? Well, first, it's one of the very few Ubuntu-based distros that is immutable and atomic, which you might wonder what that means, and it's pretty simple. The base system is locked down, so applications cannot write to it, and you can't either. Only the home folder or partition and the slash etc and slash var directories are writable. The rest is read-only. The system is updated bit by bit in what they call atomic transactions. This basically means that each update will complete successfully. If anything goes wrong, the whole operation is reverted and completely cancelled. So when you reboot, you'll reboot in the exact same state as what you knew, or you'll reboot onto a working update. Of course, an immutable system might look like a nightmare. How the hell can you operate a computer if you can't modify the system? Well, thankfully, you can. Vanilla OS has a tool called AB Root, which lets you interact with the core parts of the OS, and that will apply these changes for you. It's not recommended, though. So, in short, you still have control, but third-party apps don't, which means that only the changes you decided to apply will be applied. It's just more secure. Apart from that, Vanilla OS uses GNOME, the most vanilla GNOME they could ship on Ubuntu. Oh, and on that note, they will move to Debian as their base, instead of Ubuntu in their next major release. On top of that, they let you use Flatpaks and app images to get apps onto your system. And if you're looking for something that isn't available there, you have access to containers that run other distros at native speeds and give you access to all their packages. So, in short, Vanilla OS is a super stable distribution with access to 100% of all programs made for Linux. Now, let's see how it works. Vanilla OS has a live CD that lets you try things out or install. The installer is something I had never seen before. It looks super good, just like a GNOME app, and will take you through the basic steps, and it even has a nice legible GUI to set up your disk layout. Partitioning is done using Gparted, but once that's done, you can select the boot partition, the BIOS boot partition, one for the root folder, one for your slash home folder, plus you have the option to create a swap partition. And it's very nicely done, probably the most user-friendly installer I've ever seen on any Linux distro I've ever tried. And that's kind of fun, because you would expect Vanilla OS to appeal to more technically inclined users, not like first-time beginners, but their installer is better than the ones shipped in various distros that are focused on beginners. After installing and rebooting, you're right into your user session and you can pick between dark and light mode if you want to enable support for Flatpak and app images. And interestingly, you also get to pick the apps you want to install. You have three sets of apps, the core ones, office apps, and common utilities. You can either enable the category entirely or pick the select apps you want from each. That's another super friendly touch. It's very well designed, easily understandable, and it's a great feature to have for any type of user. You can also choose to install TimeShift to back up your system and the restricted codecs and fonts that you can also install in one click. Finally, you can choose to enable the crash reporting system or not, it's unchecked by default. And then everything you picked gets installed and you're done. 
This is very probably the best install and first run experience I've ever seen from any distro and something that the likes of Ubuntu, Fedora or Mint should absolutely take inspiration from. And after that you get to the GNOME 43 desktop which doesn't have any customization or extension. It's the vanilla experience as you might expect. So there's nothing special to talk about here. The wallpaper looks cool I guess. Now the main point of vanilla OS is to offer the ability to run multiple distros on just one system with distro containers using distro bars. And to manage that you have the vanilla OS control center, a simple GNOME app that lets you manage your system updates and activate various subsystems, much like what Windows has with WSL. For updates you get a few interesting options like scheduling when you want to apply them, avoiding installing and downloading updates when the system is under heavy use or on low battery, and turning on or off automatic updates. What's more interesting though is the subsystems. These are simply containers that will run another distro and allow you to install packages and apps to it through the command line. You can add an Arch subsystem to get access to the AUR, a Fedora subsystem with DNF as the package manager, you get an OpenSUSE container plus a Void Linux one and one for Alpine Linux, or you can create your own with any other distro you want. But in itself that doesn't seem very useful, right? You already have a system, so why do you need other distros for? Well, it's for the apps. APX or Apex is vanilla OS all-in-one package manager. It lets you install applications for any source that you have access to, including all your distro containers. The syntax is pretty easy. You just type APX install followed by the package manager that will perform the actual install and the package name. For example, if I wanted to install DaVinci Resolve from the AUR, I could type APX install dash dash AUR DaVinci Resolve and APX will automatically start my Arch container and use the Arch package manager to install DaVinci Resolve from the AUR. And this means that you virtually have access to all the software that's ever been developed for Linux, which is exactly what we need to fix the distro packaging fragmentation problem. Now, of course, if the package is bad or fails to install, it will still fail to install in a container. For example, I could never manage to run Resolve because the AUR package is just not working for me. And on top of that, apps installed this way will show up in your GNOME overview and app grid, just like if they were installed on the base system itself. You just click the icon and it opens and it works. Whether you started the container before or not, it just works. Now, it does have a drawback, which is when you want to uninstall an app, because you'll need to remember which container was used to install what. Apex supports apt to install dev packages, DNF for Fedora subsystems, AUR for the AUR, APK for Alpine Linux packages, Zipper in OpenSUSE, XBPS for Void Linux, Nix for NixOS, and just plain old deb and RPM installs if you want to install a single package as a file. And Apex can even be used in other distributions as well. It's distro agnostic, so you could theoretically use it on anything else. And of course, if you enabled Flatpak support, you get Flathub by default. And you can use GNOME software to install Flatpaks graphically directly to your base vanilla OS system. It's incredibly efficient and well thought out. You don't have to remember the syntax for every other package manager. You just need to learn the syntax for Apex, which is super simple, and it takes care of everything else. But running all these apps in containers, there's gotta be a performance problem, right? Well, no. Distrobox containers are basically as efficient as your base system. You would be hard pressed to notice any difference in terms of speed. They also support graphical acceleration, which means you can install games in a container and run them at native speeds. It even supports NVIDIA GPUs and vanilla OS sets the required flags automatically, so you don't even have to care about it. Well, that's in theory, because in practice, every game I installed on my OpenSUSE container in Steam refused to run. They could not detect a GPU. So it might be an NVIDIA issue, it might be a container issue, but the result is it did not work. And of course, it's not very intuitive for beginners to install apps in distro containers or using the command line to do so. 
But if you know what a container is and you have that basic knowledge, not even knowing how they work, but just that they exist and what they do, then it's a terrific solution. And if you absolutely need to install something to the base system, you can. There's a pre-installed tool called abroot that lets you execute a command, like running apt since the system is Ubuntu based. So you could type abroot exec apt install and then a package name and this will be installed on top of the base system and kept throughout updates. It is not recommended though, as it kind of breaks the purpose of the whole distro. Now for updates. Vanilla OS is not a rolling release. It has fixed releases that follow the Ubuntu release convention. This might change with the move to a Debian base in the next release of Vanilla OS, which will be Vanilla OS 2.0. Flat packs you install through GNOME software or the command line will be updated through the same methods. System updates are handled by VSO for Vanilla System Operator. It performs updates in the background by default with automatic updates, which you can configure in the Vanilla Control Center. Or you can perform updates manually using VSO in a terminal. All updates will require a reboot though, because Vanilla OS creates two root partitions. At first, they are both exactly the same, but when you install your first update, the partition you're not currently using gets updated. When you reboot, you reboot to the new one and not to the one you were using previously. And if anything goes wrong, well, you can just reboot to the partition that was never updated and you get access to the system as you knew it that worked perfectly fine because it was never updated in the first place. In my time with Vanilla OS, I encountered almost no issues. It's been extremely stable, which is surprising for such a complex imbrication of different systems. I installed it on my Stellaris 15 with an NVIDIA GPU and it ran great. But there are issues. As I mentioned, you're running all non-Flatpak software in a container. If all you need is in FlatHub, then you don't need Vanilla OS. If you need more software for multiple sources, then you need multiple containers, one for each package manager you want to access. This takes up a lot of space. And if your container dies, so do all your installed applications and related user data, which means there is a risk to lose some stuff if you're not careful. The second problem is the disk space usage of the main system. Sure, having two root partitions is great for stability, but it also consumes a lot of disk space you will never use. I also noticed that apps installed from containers sometimes don't show up in the GNOME app grid and you have to run an Apex command to actually add them. They generally showed up after a reboot though, and it doesn't happen all the time, but it can happen. And of course, it's also a very young distribution. It's developed by the main developer of the Bottles project, which means he has a pretty good track record and there are a few other contributors, but it's still not as big as another mainstream distro, which means if you encounter an issue and you need some online help, your options will be more limited than with say Fedora, Ubuntu or Mint. So, Vanilla OS is a fantastic concept, something that I wouldn't hesitate to call the future of Linux distros. You get access to virtually 100% of the software made for Linux, running at native speeds with a super stable base, the ability to revert to a usable system if anything goes wrong, and probably the best install and first run experience I've seen on any distro. But it's not for everyone. If all you need is in FlatHub, then you don't need Vanilla OS. And if you don't know your way around the command line or you don't understand what a container is, it's gonna be pretty confusing to use. Still, with a graphical layer on top of Apex that would let users install anything graphically from their containers, and with all these containers being made completely transparent for users, it could be the single best solution for people who need access to all the software, but still need to keep a super stable system. And personally, I don't need that. Everything on FlatHub or in my distros repos is more than enough to get my work done. I don't need access to all the apps in the AUR. They are already available in other formats, at least the ones I use. But Vanilla OS is a fantastic concept and I can't wait to see where they'll go next. And where I'll go next is to this segue, to our sponsor. If you're looking for a new computer and you plan to run Linux on it, stop looking at devices that only support Windows and pray and hope that your favorite distro will run without any hardware issues. Buy a computer that supports Linux natively. 
Tuxedo is based in Germany, but they ship to most countries in the world. And they do just that. They sell laptops and desktops that were made to run Linux. The components are picked specifically for their Linux compatibility. They have a big range of devices that should fit every price point and every need. Whether it's a laptop, a desktop, a NUC, a gaming device or an affordable laptop, you have everything. All the devices are very customizable and all the laptops are openable, repairable and upgradable. So if you need a new PC, click the link in the description below and get yourself a tuxedo computer. They are really good. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like the video, well, there's always that thumbs down button. And you can also tell me why in the comments. And if you really enjoy the channel, there are plenty of links in the description to support it with LibraPay, PayPal, Patreon, YouTube memberships, YouTube thanks, whatever. You know how this works. So thanks everyone for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.